So let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought about how much you've spent on holidays, special occasions, and events last year? If I were to ask you how much you spent, could you actually tell me? And the truth is, on those types of expenses, we really don't know how much we spend every single year. Today, I'm gonna show you how I use sinking funds in my budget so I'm prepared with cash to save for those types of expenses and how I add a little bit of fun to my savings plan as well. from the Budget Mom. Come along with me as I strive to live a life I love on a budget that I can afford. Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel and today we're going to be talking about sinking funds. So I get a lot of questions, especially on my Instagram, what are sinking funds and how do I, how do I work them into my budget? So I kind of came up with my sinking funds plan in my budget at the beginning of 2018. I was sitting down at my kitchen table and I was kind of thinking about the new year and I was specifically thinking about Christmas. And the question came up was, what did I spend on Christmas last year? And then of course more questions came up, but not only that, how much did I spend on the rest of holidays last year, my special events, my occasions? And surprisingly, it add, uh, added up to over two thousand dollars yes so it was kind of one of those aha moments like no wonder in the past i was putting this these types of expenses on my credit cards because let's be honest when these types of things come up we rarely have a plan to pay for these expenses with cash and everything that i do in my budget and my budgeting method is to deter me from using credit cards i don't want to have to feel pressured to use my credit cards when these type of expenses come up. So I've come up with a system in my budget to pay for every single holiday, special occasion, and event in the new year with cash. So what is the difference between a sinking fund and your emergency fund? Sinking funds are used for a planned goal. Okay, it's a planned expense. Your emergency fund is used for unplanned expenses. You don't really know what you're gonna need the money for, you just know you need to have it just in case. So a sinking fund or sinking funds, planned goal, planned expense. Your emergency fund, unplanned expenses. So that's kind of the difference. Now, to get started with sinking funds, I suggest before you even start looking into creating sinking funds that you have a realistic budget in your life, a working budget. And so I've added a link to an article in the description of this video to help you get started with a budget in your life and if that's where you need to start. Um, so the reason you need to have a budget is because you need to know how much extra income you have or want to have to throw at these types of expenses. Now, everybody saves for sinking funds in different ways. Some save it you know, in a savings account at the bank. Some people like me use cash envelopes. Now, I get a lot of questions. Why do you save for these types of expenses, your holidays and events in cash envelopes rather than in say a savings account at a bank? There's a couple of diff different reasons why. I like to save cash in my cash envelopes for holidays and events because I plan on using that cash within a year. And not only that, sometimes I like to plan ahead. So for example, this Christmas was the first Christmas that I saved $500 in cash for an all cash Christmas budget. And I did that by using sinking funds. And throughout the year, Sometimes if I find a good deal, I like to pick up presents throughout the year and saving it in cash envelopes allows me to have that cash available to me and on me to go and make that purchase with cash. Now, it's just a preference. This is how I like to do it. If you would like to do it using savings accounts, that's fine. But a lot of the time too, a lot of banks don't allow you to have multiple savings accounts without charging fees. And so fees and that type of things is another thing that you have to worry about when you're dealing with a lot of different savings accounts. And for me, I have probably six or seven sinking funds that I'm saving for at any given time. And I don't want to have six or seven savings accounts open at my bank where I'm worrying about fees. Now I'm lucky. I am at a credit union that allows me to have as many savings accounts as I want without fees. 
Um, but I just choose to have these smaller goals, these smaller sinking funds and cash envelopes, and my bigger saving goals are held at my credit union. So let me show you how I use sinking funds in my budget, my complete method, and how I make it really fun as well. I try sharing my story to remind readers that there is a way out. That with hard work, dedication, determination, motivation, it's all about having a plan for your money. And that's what gives you the true control. Holy crap, it just changed my life. And they're like, oh man, Nico. It takes time, it takes dedication, it takes work. But no more credit card debt. So I just wanted to bring you over to my kitchen table and kind of show you what I have going on for my sinking funds and how I use sinking funds in my budget. So this is my budget binder. Let me just move some things out of the way so we can bring this over. So this is my sinking funds um, yearly saving goals and events, which is technically my sinking funds. These are the sinking funds that I'm saving for for 2019, the new year. So like I told you, now sinking funds, I like to do um, sinking funds for bigger holidays and events, things that I know are going to be a pretty big impact on my budget, something that I don't want to have a huge expense with a certain, you know, specific paychecks. So I like to throw a little bit every single month into a cash envelope for these types of expenses. Now, I came up with these sinking funds by looking at what I spent money on last year. And then I decided, well, what are those holidays and events that are pretty big expense that I know I may not have the money in my budget at that specific time? Now, you could see New Year's is only $50. However, the rest of my sinking funds are pretty big. My biggest expense, obviously, is Christmas. Now, what do you need to do first? First, you need to look at your budget. And like I said, you need to have a working budget. Now, this is, for example, my paycheck that I received on December 5th. I'm a paycheck budgeter, which means I create a paycheck or a budget for every paycheck that I receive. And as you can see right down here, I have my sinking funds in my budget. And so you need to have and create a budget to figure out what can you afford for sinking funds in your budget. That's why it's really important to have a budget in place. So my sinking funds tracker allows me to write out how much do I want to have saved for that specific holiday or event. And not only that, but how much do I have to save every single month to come up with enough money for my specific goal? So I started saving for New Year's um, back in July of 2018. I started saving $9 a month. All these other um, sinking funds that you see, I'm actually starting to save for those in January. Now, Valentine's, I did start um, saving in July as well last year, just because New Year's and Valentine's Day, they're in the very beginning of the year. So I started saving for them last year just so I made sure I had the money for these when they come up in the new year. Um, but the rest, like fourth, from 4th of July down, I'm starting in January. So I literally take the yearly amount, the total goal amount that I want to save for, and I divide it by how many months do I have to save. Now, when you're talking about events and holidays, you're going to have a due date. So for instance, I want to have 4th of July saved by 4th of July, which means for me, I like to have the money a little bit before the actual goal date. So for example, with Christmas, I don't want to have my Christmas budget saved by the exact date because I want to be able to plan. I want to be able to go out and buy presents. So I want to have my Christmas budget saved by November. That gives me 11 months to save $800, which means I need to pay, take out $73 from every paycheck or $73 a month. Now this is your monthly amount. So I would actually take 73 and divide it by two and that's how much I would pay take from each paycheck because I'm a paycheck budgeter. So I get paid twice a month. So this is the monthly amount that I need to have saved. 
So you figure out how much you want to save for that specific goal or event. The next step is figuring out when do you want to have the money saved by. And then you can figure out how many months you have to save. And you literally just do that by taking your goal amount and dividing by dividing it by how many months you have to save. So this is my yearly saving goals and events worksheet. I actually have this available for free in my free resource library for people to use to write down and start their sinking funds journey. The next thing that gets kind of a little bit more complicated is I not only do I like to save for sinking funds, I like to know what my progress looks like for all of my sinking funds. Now this is my sinking funds savings tracker. So I literally put my saving goals up here at the top and how much I want to save for each goal. Now, as you can see, I'm going to be spending over $2,000 next year on my holidays and events. That's a lot of money. And you don't think about it when you're paying for each holiday and event individually, but it adds up. This is why we have sinking funds in our budget. So my sinking funds tracker is literally just writing down anytime I make a deposit into my sinking funds. So for me, as you can see, I'm doing it with every paycheck, the 5th, the 20th, the 5th. Now this is for December. But as you can see, it's not a huge impact on my budget, but it gets me to my goal. Okay, so for instance, I just got done saving um, for Christmas in November of this year for my Christmas budget this year, but I will also be saving again for Christmas starting in January for 2019. So Christmas 18, 2018 was a sinking fund goal that I had for this year, but the rest of them are for the new year. And then anytime I make a deposit, so on the 5th of December, I got my paycheck, I went and pulled out cash from my envelopes, and it was only $12. It was only $12 um, that day that I put into my sinking funds, but it's going to get me to where I need to go. So this is how I track my sinking funds. And so obviously um, when I started tracking my sinking funds, I had a starting balance. And so I just wrote down the starting balance, the amount of cash that I had in each of my sinking funds. Now I'm going to bring you over. This might make a little more sense. Here is how I'm saving for my sinking funds. And these are the sinking funds that I have for 2019. And here are all my different cash envelopes. Now here's how my process works. I have visual trackers for all of my sinking funds. So for here's Valentine's Day. And I like to just color in my progress as I go along. So when I put in money into my sinking funds envelopes, it's a great way for me to stay motivated, to let myself know that I am making progress on my goals. This is just how I do it. This is how I make it fun, is I like to add these little trackers into each one of my envelopes. Now, as you can see, I did finish Christmas of this year. And so that one's already done and filled out. There's no more cash in that Christmas envelope because it's gone. <laughs> It's gone. I already spent it. My Christmas um, presents are already wrapped and under the tree. I'm prepared and ready and it was fantastic and it felt amazing to not have to put any of that on my, on my credit card. But so with my birthdays, I get a lot of questions. Well, what if I have a ton of birthdays that I want to plan for? I would say cash flow your smaller birthdays. Okay, so if it's like 50 bucks, now I have my mom's birthday in there for 50 bucks. I do plan on spending more for my mom's birthday. Um, this will just help with the, with the cost. But as far as my son and my, boy, my boyfriend, I spent a lot of money. So I chose the three birthdays out of the year where I knew I was going to spend the most money. And that's what I'm going to save for when it comes for my birthdays. Each birthday has its own tracker. And then, of course, I have 4th of July, my son's back-to-school costs that are going to be due in August. And then here are the sinking funds that I'm currently saving for this year to prepare myself for the new year. So Valentine's and New Year's are the first holidays in the new year that I'm going to have cash for for these types of expenses. And I'm almost there. And like I said, I do a little bit each 
paycheck. That way it's not such a huge impact on my budget. So this is the method and what I use to save um, all of these. Now, if you're, if you have, everyone has different sinking funds. I have a ton of free sinking funds envelopes in my free resource library. I'll be putting a link to my free resource library in the description of this video, but there is a ton of different ones over there that you can use for all of your different sinking funds if you wanna save for them in cash envelopes. I have Christmas, and of course, we can't forget, I mean, some people go crazy with the Super Bowl. I know we're huge football fans here, so I'm not actually saving for Super Bowl this year. I'm going to cash flow that, because um, I, I really don't plan on spending too much money for that um, purpose, but this is how I'm saving for my sinking funds. And this is how I track my progress. I'm a visual person. I like to see the progress that I'm making on my specific goals. The next sinking fund tracker that I have is kind of fun. It's another visual tracker. So I created a graph basically of all of my different goals and all of my goals are the graph in yellow. My progress is in these colors. So obviously I hit my goal for 2018 and I'm making my way for the rest of these and I'll start the rest of these in January. But both of these, all three of these sinking funds trackers are in the free resource library that I have on my website. So this is the method that I use. Now, don't forget, these total over $2,200. Now. I have, I did do some updates to mine. I increased some of my um, sinking fund goals because I knew I was going to have more in my budget. My budget bill tracker that's included in my 2019 workbook has an area to write out your sinking funds. And it's, you put it into your budget to make sure everything fits within your budgeted income. This is how I do it. And it's a lot of fun. And not only that, I'm preparing myself for the future. If you found this video helpful, please share it and don't forget to subscribe.